Celsius. In its simplest definition, a temperature scale uses numbers to classify how hot or cold something is. The Celsius scale is the most commonly used scale of temperature around the world, with units of degrees Celsius. At one atmosphere of pressure, zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water freezes, and 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature where it boils. A nerd will tell you that's technically not true, but we'll get to that later. The history of the Celsius scale begins all the way back in the year 1742, with Swedish physicist and astronomer Anders Celsius. Though he invented the scale that would eventually become Celsius as we know it, it involved a choice that would seem bizarre to us today. Zero was boiling and 100 was freezing, so higher numbers represented colder temperatures. Indeed, since temperature is a kind of energy measurement, this would mean that higher numbers, counterintuitively, correspond to lower energy. However, Celsius himself actually knew this. You will recall that he lived in Sweden, where it gets exceptionally cold, so he chose this orientation to avoid dealing with negative numbers too much. Additionally, his choice was based on the earlier Delisle scale, which follows a similar orientation. Celsius's water-based approach resulted in a revolution in temperature scale standardization. His work was highly respected among the scientific community, though pretty much everyone came to the decision of making one change, flip 0 and 100. And with that, the modern Celsius scale was invented. There is still one remaining convention to discuss, the name of the scale. The standard name was centigrade, beginning in the 1800s, However, this could also mean one one-hundredth of a gradient, where the gradient is a unit of angle measurement, as covered previously. Due to this ambiguity, the name Celsius was adopted for the scale in honor of Anders Celsius, even though he technically didn't invent it. This is the standard name of the scale today in scientific communities, though centigrade persists in some more colloquial contexts. Fahrenheit the Fahrenheit scale, with units of degrees Fahrenheit, is likely familiar to those living in the United States of America, as well as places with heavy U.S. influence. Its story begins in 1724, 18 years before that of Celsius, with Polish-Lithuanian physicist and inventor Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. It is believed that the Fahrenheit scale was initially defined using two fixed points at 0 and 90. Zero was chosen as the stable temperature of a brine made of ice, water, and ammonium chloride. 90 was based on an estimate of average human body temperature. The scale was based on earlier work by Danish astronomer Ole Christensen Romer, inventor of the Romer scale. Unfortunately, we're not discussing these temperature scales in chronological order, so we'll get to that later too. A later adjustment put 32 as water's freezing point and 96 as human body temperature, leaving 64 degrees between. Daniel Fahrenheit chose a power of 2 so that degrees could be marked just by repeatedly splitting intervals in half. However, soon after, Anders Celsius's work meant that using water to measure temperature was the hot new thing. So the Fahrenheit scale underwent one final major revision, 32 and 212 became the freezing and boiling points of water, respectively. This puts the brine's stable temperature at about 4 degrees and the average human body temperature at about 98.6 degrees. A modest difference from Daniel Fahrenheit's original vision. Accounting for this gives us these formulas for Celsius-Fahrenheit conversion. Though Fahrenheit was in popular use among English-speaking countries for a while, it largely fell out of favor throughout the 20th century as Celsius took over. Except in the US, as previously mentioned. Fahrenheit and Celsius each have their supporters. One might claim that Fahrenheit's 0 to 100 range is a close representation for the temperature range where humans live, and that rounding in Fahrenheit is more useful, while another might point out that Celsius's 0 to 100 range was designed to work nicely with water, which humans find themselves using extremely frequently. Feel free to discuss while respecting each other's humanity and not sparking massive flame wars. Thank you. Kelvin. The Kelvin scale is the temperature scale used in the International System of Units, or SI. The International System of Units is exactly what it says on the tin, a standardized measurement system to be used by everyone. In order to understand the Kelvin scale, 
let's start really thinking about what temperature actually is. It begins with a concept called kinetic energy, which is the energy of an object that comes from its motion. This is determined by the amount of work required to accelerate an object to a given speed. More mass means more kinetic energy because heavier objects need more work to be moved. Similarly, more speed means more kinetic energy because you need more work to make it go faster. Now, temperature is simply a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a material. Ultimately, these particles are jiggling around at the atomic level, and temperature just tells us how much they jiggle. So, what if there's no jiggling at all in the material? That would mean it has the lowest possible temperature, which has a special name, absolute zero, or negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. This is where zero is on the Kelvin scale, making it something called an absolute temperature scale. This is the least arbitrary possible choice for zero in a temperature scale. So, if meaningfulness of point choices is something you value, then Kelvin is the scale for you. A Kelvin itself has the same magnitude as a degree Celsius. A change by one Kelvin equates to a change by one degree Celsius. Quick note on terminology. The Kelvin scale, as defined in the SI, does not use degrees. The units are Kelvins, not degrees Kelvin. As for capitalization, the K is uppercase for the scale, but lowercase for the unit. Of course, this only matters for pedantry. The history of the Kelvin scale begins in 1848 with British physicist and engineer William Thomson, first Baron Kelvin. At this time, Kelvin calculated absolute zero as being about negative 273 degrees Celsius, which we know is accurate today. This was accompanied by a proposal for an absolute Celsius scale, the predecessor of the modern Kelvin scale. However, the initial system was flawed and had to be refined in 1854, and then the 10th General Conference on Weights and Measures redefined it in 1954. The unit name changed from degrees absolute Celsius to degrees Kelvin, then to just Kelvins between 1967 and 1968. The story concludes with the 2019 SI revision, which centered on redefining units based on universal constants. The Kelvin in particular was redefined in terms of the Boltzmann constant, and that definition stands today. All other temperature scales are now defined in terms of the Kelvin scale, so, so 0 and 100 degrees Celsius aren't exactly the freezing and boiling points of water anymore, as previously mentioned. Lightning round. With the main three temperature scales done, here are a bunch of weird and obscure temperature scales in quick succession. Rankine. This one's unit is the degree Rankine, written degree R or degree RA. It's Fahrenheit, but zero degrees Rankine is absolute zero. This was proposed in 1859 by Scottish mathematician and physicist William John McCorn Rankine. Some call the units Rankines instead, like with Kelvins. This one is not used much. Romer. This is the Fahrenheit forerunner from before, invented by Ole Christensen Romer in 1702, and whose unit is written degrees R E. It was defined so that 7.5 and 60 degrees are water's freezing and boiling point, respectively. Historians hypothesize that zero degrees was based on the brine temperature from before. One version of Fahrenheit took Romer and multiplied everything by four to eliminate fractions. Delisle. This is the Celsius forerunner from above, invented by French cartographer and astronomer Joseph Nicolas de Lisle in 1732, and whose unit is written degrees D. Again, higher numbers are colder in this scale. This scale was used in Russia for a while. Newton. Invented by Sir Isaac Newton in 1701, Newton was a brilliant mathematician and physicist, but he was not a good temperature scale inventor. His scale describes many different reference points, many of which are completely subjective, such as the greatest heat of a bath which one can endure for some time when the hand is dipped in and is kept still. The objective parts taken together make for a completely inconsistent and incoherent system. However, this scale was likely only intended for personal use, so we can't judge it too harshly. Rayomor. 
Based on a 1730s scale by French entomologist René Antoine Ferchot de Remor, 0 and 80 degrees are the melting and boiling point of water. You're probably starting to see a pattern here. This one was widespread throughout Europe up to the 19th century. Wedgwood, an 18th century scale by English potter and abolitionist Josiah Wedgwood, intended to be used for metals. Zero degrees Wedgwood was 580.8 degrees Celsius, and step sizes were 72 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, in creating this system, Wedgwood overshot the melting points of copper, silver, and gold each by at least 1400 degrees Celsius. A later correction revealed that the starting point was about 300 degrees Celsius too high, and the steps nearly twice as big as they should be, but the element melting points were overshot even then. That concludes our lightning round. Thank you.